15 years ago on this exact date well on this exact all right so 15 years ago november 2004 a few weeks after my birthday somewhere i don't know exact dates but i bought a sony f 500 which was i don't have it anymore but it looked a bit like so that's the sony 500 i bought it it could run games and a few weeks later i had my first game written on it uh, running on it and started releasing it and i came up with the name orange pixel basically because i was staring at the screen drawing just an orange pixel for the logo and that's why i named it orange pixel and that's how it started 15 years ago it's been a great journey a long journey uh, let's talk about it after the intro All right, so last week I asked for questions on all the social medias, YouTube, Insta, Twitter, Facebook, wherever. Um, I got a bunch of questions here and there and I'll try to weave them into uh, the journey, the story of Orange Pixel, uh, 15 years of being a full-time independent game developer. It's been a ride and I, to be honest, when I started all this, I didn't expect it to become a career, I guess. But uh, let's, let's just dive into how it all started. Right, so November 2004, I had this phone and it could run games. Um, the first game I made was Smash Dizzy. Uh, it was a little bit of a platformer, very simple, very... Um, it wasn't really good, it wasn't well written because it took me only four or five weeks to learn the whole uh, system and the ecosystem for devices like the Sony. And then there was a lot of other devices that were just a little bit different and they couldn't run the game at all. So it ran on Sony devices and a couple of others, but that's it. It wasn't really a great success, but it was my first commercial game. It wasn't my first ever game though, because um, I, as soon as I came into contact with computers, and I guess the first one was the Spectrum 48K, uh, I was sold on creating stuff. I had always been creating stuff, but never on computers. I was drawing and I was crafting stuff and everything. I, I like to build things. And then I came into contact with computers and noticed I could actually draw and animate stuff and turn it into a game. So ever since that 48K Spectrum um, and all the computers after it, the Atari 600, the Commodore 64, my favorite device of all times probably, uh, the Amiga 500 and then eventually PCs, I've always been creating games. I just never released anything or not commercial in any way. So my first ever commercial game was Smash Dizzy on a Sony uh, crappy phone. So over these 15 years, a lot of stuff has changed for both me, but also the game industry and whatever. I mean, um, back in 2004, uh, smartphones weren't available yet. I guess maybe a PDA or a Blackberry or something like that there were no real good phones um, and mobile gaming was like the biggest joke on the block uh, nobody took it seriously all the big game companies just sniffed at it and laughed at it and made jokes about it and now 15 years later obviously uh, mobile gaming is probably uh, making more money than uh, pc or console gaming at the moment i don't have exact numbers but i'm pretty sure um, at least all the big companies are on there with one or more studios and it's not a joke anymore it's just like a very big gaming market indie game developer is now a thing uh, in 2004 it wasn't a thing we were just game developers on a very low budget and now we're indie game developers and of course gaming has also shifted um we started with all these premium games and then we shifted to freemium games and still a lot of people that don't like it but it's a huge market now and now we're maybe shifting to subscription models I don't know. Um, of course, the consoles got a lot more open for smaller developers because in the early days, you couldn't really get your game on such a console. Companies like Sony and Nintendo and Microsoft didn't really uh, want you there. They wanted the big AAA games, the, the, the console selling games. It suddenly changed and indies were welcome everywhere. And even though consoles got open, I really didn't jump onto the whole console market. Uh, mostly a technical thing. The couple of games that are on the Vita and the 3DS are uh, ported by other companies, not by me. And it's really just a technical thing. I had to learn new languages, new devices, and um, it's never been worth it to invest all that time into those things. So um, I never really made the jump to focusing on console games. And for me personally, in 
2004, I guess, I, I quit my job as a software developer. I was living at my parents' house, trying to figure out life and everything. And then going 15 years later, um, I bought a house. I, I've been living together with Aline and we got married earlier this year. And a lot of stuff has changed since then. But of course, not all those years have been just highs. There have been uh, many lows as well. And financially, I mean, uh, starting a business in 2004 in mobile gaming, it was a very weird market. Um, it, it started to grow pretty good as though, uh, but in 2009, Android came on the market and there was an iPhone in 2007. The market was changing and I had to just jump over to something else because I knew the old Java games, old feature phones, that was a dead end. So I had to switch to a completely different market, even though 2007, 2009 was like a peak in those mobile games. I had to start from scratch again on smartphones, building up everything again and trying to get my name out there. So the first couple of years on normal mobile and the first couple of years on smartphones, I did a lot of project work for other companies as well. There are probably 20 or 30 games out there that were made by me just without my name on it and made for other companies because my own games were obviously not making a lot of money at the beginning so I, this was just a way to keep floating okay so a couple of big misses in those 15 years um, obviously there might have been more but there are a few things that I I didn't really think through uh, the first one was not releasing on iPhone when it just got to the market uh, 2007 it took me four or five years before I had my first iPhone game. Um, I think I missed the boat there pretty big. Um, my games were perfectly suited for iPhones and, and iPods at the time. I just didn't have Apple devices, Apple hardware. It was very expensive. I just, I didn't have it. I didn't see the potential. I didn't see why it would be different. And that's a big regret because obviously it was big and maybe I could have done very well in those uh, four years that I missed. And another thing, not really a, a miss, but something I never thought about, and maybe this is a good hint for other game developers or starting game developers, uh, 15 years fly by quickly. Uh, when I started this, it was uh, mostly a hobby that actually made some money. And now 15 years later, I'm 43 years old, and this is my career. This, I'm, I'm a game developer and this is what I do and I still enjoy it massively. I, I love creating games or releasing games, but it's also the only thing I have on my resume, basically running my own company, a solo company, no employees, just me creating games for 15 years. And I'm 43 and in the Netherlands, you'll have to work till you're 67, probably unless you do very well. So that's another 25 years of game development ahead of me. It's a scary thought and I never thought about that 15 years ago and or even in the last 10 years or 12 or 5 or it I never really thought about those things so if you start a career now if you're an indie game developer just starting out right now make sure you do understand that it could be your career for the next decade two decades or maybe even three decades at 43 years old the job opportunities aren't a lot so if I stop making games now I don't I honestly don't know what I can do so um, think about that I never did 15 years ago and before this gets depressive let's talk about a couple of wins in those 15 years because those are pretty entertaining as well my biggest biggest win probably was heroes of loot which was um, a game I didn't know what I was making a top-down twin sticker dungeon gauntlet like game I just did something eight months of work in the middle of a renovation because uh, we bought the house next door and tiny house next door and we turned it into one big house so there were was construction going on everywhere around me and i was creating this game and when i released it it got picked up by almost every big game site even the pc version i don't know how it happened but maybe there was nothing else on the market right right then at that time so they all wrote about it and uh, the game did very well on the iOS paid list. Uh, I was there a couple of weeks just underneath Angry Birds. It was probably my biggest hit game. And if something like that happens, it feels weird. It feels strange and you're very lucky and very happy. And it's it's very unreal. So uh, Heroes of Loot did very well and it's probably my best selling game in all those years. And it's still selling. So awesome. Not a big hit or something I remember from those 50 years was uh, at a certain point, I think 2013, somewhere around there um, I was contacted by someone they needed uh, three games to be made for a Sony 
hardware something they couldn't tell what it was i got a development kit which was a weird plastic box with just some hardware in there i created three games and um, the games never got released i got paid a lot of money for those unreleased games and the device turned out to be the xperia play which was a very great little game phone and um I might still have it. It was this phone, the Xperia Play. Um, it didn't look like this when I had the development kit. It like was a huge box. It turned out to be this one. So um, yeah, whatever happened to those games, I don't know. They never got released. I got paid a good sum. And uh, it was a high point because that year was made just by those three games that got unreleased. All right, so um, what about the next 15 years? Good question. To be honest, um, I don't really know. Uh, I, right now, I don't really know what happens next year. We'll have to see how Space Grunts 2 does when it gets released in like a week or something like that. Um, I don't know, honestly, we'll have to see. I do know that if I'll continue making games, um, I want to very much focus on smaller games or shorter development cycles and um, basically uh, lower the risks because releasing big games and working on games for many years, I see a lot of game developers do it. <sighs> Don't spend four years or three years or even a year working on your game. It's gonna be hard making any profits of it. From here on, I will focus on smaller games. I've been growing my games bigger and bigger, mostly because the couple of big games that I did release did extremely well. So I just kind of lost sight of the fact that if a game doesn't do well, it it's actually 12 months wasted and not a lot of revenue coming in. As for the type of games, I'll probably stick to what I know and what I've learned. Um, maybe throw in some new things here and there. I'll keep using pixel art for just a few more years. I'm pretty sure it's not going anywhere. It's just a certain art style and some people hate it. Other people love it and other people don't care just as long as the game is good. So most people won't really care if it's pixel art or not. If I ever move to something else, it's probably going to be a high resolution 2D art because I don't see myself doing 3D. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with what I know. I also hope to grow my PC audience and my PC games and make more money on that platform because as much as I love mobile gaming, the changes in mobile gaming are so quickly. Every five, six months, there's a new version of iPhone or Android and that means new development kits, changes in behind the scenes on what you can use as a developer, new rules, new guidelines. And on PC, it's just the same for many years in a row. And finally, I hope to get better at marketing, but I also hope to get better at marketing in the last 15 years. So I'm not sure if that's gonna happen. I know people ask questions about how do you do marketing? I don't know, honestly, whenever I have something new to show, I'll put it out there on Twitter, Facebook, Insta, uh, YouTube. I'll show the game as much as, as often as I can without being annoying. And uh, honestly, it's just hard. It's hard for everybody. Don't. I mean, don't think you're the only one who's not getting its game out there. Some games get there and most games don't. Most games don't get the attention they need or deserve. Big sites only talk about games that already made it or already on people's mind because that's what attracts new readers. So uh, yeah, don't. It's, marketing is extremely difficult and that's probably not gonna change in the next 15 years. And that's it for this week's video because I think I've been talking for a very long time not sure how long this video is gonna be, but we're gonna end it right here. Next week, I'll show you the creation of the Space Runs 2 trailer. And a few weeks from now, I'll be talking about Gunslux 3 and how badly it did uh, sales-wise and um, all that stuff. And the week after, I'll probably talk about this whole year as Orange Pixel. And I um, hope you'll just uh, subscribe to this channel and watch those videos. All right, um, just wrapping up this video, the editing, I uh, noticed I have like one minute left to make this a perfect 15 minute video, which I think is perfect for the 15 year celebration. Um, I had a bunch of extra questions that I didn't get to answer in this video. So in two weeks time, I'll upload a little uh, Q and A video and talk about those questions and give some answers. And, um, and I hope you enjoyed this video because uh, it was a lot of editing work this time and all those timeline thingies and uh, I think I gave all the information I wanted to give. Of course there were a lot more highs and lows and but these were some of the memorable things and um, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Because I've been uh, working my... It is a thing that's... Uh, um, 
everything just uh, <laughs> 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 